from the mountains of my home in the Eastern Cape. I intend to do what no other hunter has achieved before. It's just been non-stop for about three days now and it's really foggy, cold, um, not ideal for hunting baboons. They, they hate this type of weather so they'll be holed up which is a shame because it's really misty outside and I kind of feel for bow hunting it would help a lot to sort of you know, move around in the mist a little bit there in the trees it's really misty but um, no they don't like this this weather at all they'll go down into the deep valleys they'll get into the cliffs and the rock faces and they'll just hold up there so not really be doing much bow hunting or chasing them lately but the first sunny day we get after this they're gonna come out and they're gonna come out in their numbers um, they're gonna be cold they're gonna be wet so they're gonna want to stay out in the sun and I'm gonna try and use that to my advantage. I'm gonna try and stay in the trees and the thick bush and hopefully catch them there out in the open.
decent male over there. He's probably like 80 to 100 yards away. He's an absolute giant. If I had my rifle, I would smoke him. He's massive. I think they might have picked up something because they're moving on. I can't get some more footage. I'm only got my cell phone. I don't know if people are going to uh, comment or or think rather, you know, why don't you just sit in a blind or put out some bait or something and um, just wait for the baboons to come in. Or why don't you rather go and find out where they sleep and then just wait there for them to come out and shoot on there. And I can do that, but as I said before, you know, I could go and shoot a baboon almost any time with a rifle. I know all those things. I know where they feed, I know where they drink, I know where they sleep, but you know, that's not going to better me as a hunter. It's not going to improve my skills. And I'd love to, you know, one day go on a an elk hunt or a caribou hunt with my bow shoot mountain goat or you know one of the sheep and actually one of my most dream hunt that I'd love to do would be a Markor in Tajikistan but um, you know those are some of the most difficult hunts to do there's no baiting and feeding or anything there um, also pretty expensive but I need to challenge myself. I need to improve my skills so that I can be a better hunter. So when I do finally get the opportunity to do those types of hunts, I can, I can really make the most of it. So as I've said before, I've, I've shot my fair share of baboons. I've shot plenty. Um, this is different. This is a challenge to improve me as a hunter and to prove my, my skills as a guide too. So I'm gonna crack at it. I'm very fortunate that I live on the farm. I can come in and out anytime I want to to try and shoot these baboons. But the fact that I have to go after such a phenomenal animal like a baboon means it's gonna be such a cool challenge. So I'm gonna stick with it. I've given myself a year um, to compete with them. That's how difficult I believe this hunt to be. So that's tough now, but I just feel like each time I go out, probably doing it a little bit more. I do something a little bit different the baboons have kind of I think they get a bit of a vibe of what I'm up to so their patterns haven't really been uh, what we're used to they're very skittish at the moment so I'm actually going to leave them for a couple of days 
and what I wanted to do is bring you guys along here to one of our hunting areas where we actually support a local school in our community where we supply them with meat. So with December coming up, uh, we kind of need to just keep the, the stock supply up and I'm going to come out here and see if I can find maybe a cold water buck or a couple of impala. Um, shoot them, I've swapped my boho for my trusty rifle. So I'm going to shoot them, we're going to get them processed up and then we'll deliver them to the school sometime. I thought it would be quite cool if you guys tagged along and see what else we get up to apart from chasing baboons with a bow. by myself I'm not going to try and risk a, a headshot on a water buck on the edge of a valley here so I'll just load up with a couple of extra impalas and that should be enough meat for the school. Alright there's a there's a group of batched impala that are just they're just the other side of this wall this is actually a ground dam um, and they're just the other side here they're drinking. Uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty pushed for time and I can see that it, it's going to start raining, so I'm not going to try and film the shot. Um, I'm just going to leave the camera here because I don't want to risk sitting at the camera, uh, spooking the Impala, and then driving around trying to find another group that I can go after. So I'm just going to head up on the top here, poke my head over. Um, hopefully they're there. They should be within about 70 to 80 yards um, from where I'm going to get set up. So yeah, hopefully I can I can get in there all four younger rams and then there's two there that have got really bad genetics I'm going to try and go for the one let's see Alright, got him. Uh, perfect type of ram to take for our school community meat project. I uh, hit him just here below the jawline. So a nice sort of shot on a cull animal. We can get as much meat out of this as, as we possibly can. The reason why I went for this one is that you can see he's quite tight on the top. Uh, what you sort of generally look for in good genetics of an Impala ram is something that will come up a deep swoop at the back You can see he's quite shallow on his swoop there and we'd like the tips of the horns to at least be You know much further apart um, Flaring out if possible that signs of excellent genetics. So even though this is a mature ram 
he didn't quite have the genetics and we want to take him out so that he doesn't breed with the females. In terms of my shot placement, I always tend to go around lower jawline, neck area. Um, I never take a headshot at more than 100 yards. This guy was at about 80 yards. So that's just my personal preference. I don't really have um, a lot of confidence in myself to take further headshots. I also don't think it's, you know, it's really fair on an animal. You got a couple of inches this way and you're into the jawline and it won't kill the animal. A little bit higher up and you might take the eye out. You're lucky if you hit the brain, but it's just too risky. And I always wait for the animal to be sideways before taking a headshot. Um, I never take a frontal headshot. That's just preference. I've got nothing against those guys that do. I think the only headshot on a frontal animal that I've ever taken was a zebra and a zebra's head you know so wide it's actually wider than what an impala's is on the side so yeah perfect grand to take out gonna feed a lot of kids I want to get him loaded up I've already got another one in the truck so we'll head down skin them out and then drop them off at the butcher <music> Colin Parlor. This meat's gonna go to a local school that we support here. Uh, they're gonna make hamburger patties, sausages, and um, nice chunks of meat out of for stews. And it's just something that we we feel helps with the community to give back. That even when we don't have hunters here with us, you know, there's still a community here. There's still people that rely on these animals for their source of protein. So it's the least we can do. We can come out. It helps us to improve the overall genetics of the area, um, helps us to just manage the numbers so they don't get too out of control. And especially with, with Christmas coming up, it's not our hunting season here in South Africa, so there's gonna be less and less hunters. But in general, it's a festive season, it's a time for celebration, and there's no reason that any family or any children for that matter should, should be hungry or go to school on an empty stomach. So. As much as I would have liked to hunt a baboon with a bow, and I'll still keep going, I'll give it a crack. As you saw there, the way that this particular troop was just raiding our orchard, within a day or two, they would have cleaned up all the crop, all the peaches, pears. Um, our plums are starting to come in season now. We've got some, some small nectarines, things like that. Uh, in the winter months, this particular troop cleaned out um, a lot of our winter fruits a lot of the apples those types of things so they can do some serious damage and i just couldn't 
I couldn't risk it and let them to do that so I decided to take them with a rifle as you guys saw but yeah a nice big male baboon after the shot which was with with my 270 uh, from my bedroom window he ran probably 80 to 100 yards away and I shot him right here in the chest so it just shows how tough these animals are and from that distance it was probably 65 yards so for an animal like this to take a a 150 grain bullet to the chest and then still run almost 100 yards shows how tough they are. Uh, a little bit of an example of just what hunting actually does and adding value is that an animal like this, a baboon, to myself and a lot of the other farmers down here, is vermin. It, they actually cost us money through damage that they do. Uh, to us, they, there's no value to it. There's nothing that you can do with them. But what hunting does, and particularly with this baboon, is that one of my clients actually sent me a message and said, look, if you happen to shoot a baboon, please, can you have him skinned out for me and send it to the taxidermist because I'd really like a baboon mount and I'll pay you the trophy fee for it. So all of a sudden, just because of hunting and somebody wanting it, this animal now has some sort of value. So I'm going to take this baboon, I'm going to skin it out, I'm going to salt it, and then I'm going to drop it for the taxidermist. The taxidermist is going to take this baboon and he's going to turn it into something. He's going to add value to it and he'll get paid from his client and the money from that he'll use to pay his employees and so on and so on. Okay, it's just a small portion of it, of the bigger picture, but it's still something. It's still a value. And there's a lot of baboons in this area. They'll still keep giving us hassles and problems, but there is no other way of adding value to the baboon. Um, people might be able to explain and say, yes, but there's photographic side of it. Not really, not directly. Um, the baboon might create value through photographic indirectly, but what hunting does is, is it takes this particular animal and puts a value on it. Now, as you saw from the video, there was a lot of small ones, there was a lot of females. Um, I was waiting particularly for a big male because my client wants a nice big full mount of it. But taking this one out, there were still two more big males. It's not really going to do anything to the troop. Um, they might still expand, they might still breed. But the baboon has value. So just quite a little insight into what hunting can actually do for a species that is considered vermin. Yeah, I'm gonna get this guy all all skinned out and then drop off the taxidermist. But yeah, like I said, I'll keep trying with my baboon, uh, with my bow, and hopefully I can come right with that. It's gonna be very difficult.